Just go ahead, let's just worship God. Let's give Him praise. Welcome to Faith School. Glory to God. Just pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Magaladosh. Eledosh. Father, we thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, we worship your holy name. Maledish. Eredoso Friday de Gredosh. Combrali de Gredos. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Please go ahead and share the video. Let it be blessed to someone. Our God is good. Malish Kambrali de Greloso Frada de Dosh. Please go ahead and share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. Mekele Dosh. 
We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship your holy name, Maladosh. Pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's charge up our spirit, man. Let's charge up our battery. Glory to God. We'll praise you, Lord Jesus. We'll praise you, Lord Jesus. We'll worship you. We'll worship you. We'll worship you, Lord Jesus. We'll praise you. We'll praise you. We'll praise you. We'll thank you, Father. We'll praise you. Please go ahead and worship him. And go ahead and share the video. Go ahead and share it. We we'll praise you, Lord. We we'll praise you, Lord. Meketo kuzo frende de gredosh. Matoso, praise him. Pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Charge up your spirit, man. And go ahead and, and share the video. Meketo kuzo. We thank you, Father. We worship you. We praise your holy name. We adore your holy name. Malish kam brede de gredosh. Zo frende keto kushko brade de gredosh. Zo frende de gredosh. We worship your holy name, Lord. Meketo kuzo frende keto kushko. We thank you, Father. We praise your holy name, Malish Kobrede de Gredos. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this morning, for this beautiful morning. Thank you, O God, because your word is gonna is gonna be so real to us this morning. Thank you for what you're gonna do in our lives. Thank you because our lives will never remain the same. The entrance of your word will give light, will give illuminations to our spirit man this morning. Our lives will be transformed. Our lives will be changed by the power of your word. Maso Frede de Gredos call. We praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. For your word. For your word. We thank you. We give you praise. We worship your holy name. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Our God is good. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Glory to God. Please, if you are watching from different groups, please go ahead and share the video. And please, let's show respect to God's word. Let's show respect to God's word. There are a couple of gifts that people post that could be distracting. You know, this is not man's word. That is our heavenly father's word. And things of God are holy. Things of God are sacred. Please, let's show respect to God's word. You know, in those groups, you don't have to, have to be there if you don't want to. But if you don't want to be there, please just leave. But don't disrespect God and his word. I'm telling you, it is a dangerous thing. Because God is not a man. <laughs> He's not a man. He's the most important person in the universe. And every one of us, we need to respect him. And part of respecting him is respecting his word. So please do not post any distracting gifts. Please, you know. This is this is this is sacred thing. You know, this is the word that can change man's life forever. This is the word of God that can give us inheritance, that can transform lives. You know, this is the word that, the word of God that has power, <clears throat> excuse me, to transform lives. What medical sciences cannot do, or what human beings cannot do, but the word of God can do it. So there is somebody that needs to pay attention to this so that his life. Can be blessed so that it can be moved to a new level of faith. Please show respect to God's word. Show respect. This is not a joking time. This is not a laughing time. Please do not post any give that is distracting. Please, very, very important. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you. We give a praise. We receive illuminations from your word this morning. Thank you, Father. In all this afternoon, as the case may be, wherever people are watching, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Our God is good. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. All right, this is faith school. Faith school is where we come to learn about principles of faith. Now, if you're a believer, your lifestyle should be a faith lifestyle. What do I mean by that? Which means the word of God should be your primary source of inspiration, your primary source of living, your, your everything. Because that's the kingdom that you belong to right now. So, the, the manual of the kingdom is the word of God. So, which means you should live by the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by, by bread alone. He didn't say we shouldn't eat. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word, notice every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
So you are a believer, you are born again. Your realm is the realm of faith and is the realm of supernatural. You know, every one of us, we want miracles in our lives. And the way to make supernatural natural in our lives, it is faith realm. Glory to God. It is faith, which means you believe the word of God. What God has spoken in his word concerning your situation, you make it to be the final authority in your life. It doesn't matter what the outside is saying. Why? Because the things of the outside, they are subject to change, but not the word of God. <laughs> Glory to God. Not God's word. Things that we see on the outside, they are subject to change, but not God's word. God's word is eternal. So if you want to be experiencing miracles in your life every day, this, <laughs> you are in the right place. Glory to God. You are in the right place. Because he said, teach a man how to fish. He will never beg for bread again. Teach a man how to fish. Which means he's skilled. He understands how to do things. And God wants us to understand how his kingdom operates. God is not a magician. God has a process of doing things. <laughs> Glory to God. He's got a process of doing things. So he wants us to learn the process so that we can begin to exercise it here on earth. So that we can be calling heaven on our behalf all of the time. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So that we can be calling heaven to help us all of the time. On, on uh, All of the time. Very, very important. So you are in the right place. If you desire to see change in your life. If you desire to see situations being turned around in your life. If you desire to be healed. If you desire for breakthrough in your life, if you desire for God to consistently be showing forth in your life, you are in the right place, which is faith school. Glory to God. Because this is where we are learning the principles of operations of God or how to put the kingdom of God to work on our behalf. God desires that. He desires that because he wants us to walk in victory all of the time. Glory to God. All right. So just like I normally read, let's read this Hebrews 11. Okay, just a, 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 a recap. It is a school. We have, we have learned. We're still going to learn. We're still going to teach it over and over and over and over again. Glory to God. But at least we just hang it for a while. We have learned about the why of faith. Because one of the why of faith is without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you're a child of God, if you want to please God, the best way to please God, it is by faith. You don't have a choice if you want to please God. You don't have a choice but to walk by faith if you want to please God. And one of the way of faith is through faith, you can have victory in your life. You can have breakthrough in your life. You can have healing. You can have anything that you desire that is in line with God's word. You can have it in your life through faith. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Think about that. Even our faith, which means your absolute trust in God and his word that you refuse to let go, despite whatever is happening, it will always give you victory. It will always make you to be victorious over sickness, over the devil, over lack, whatever may be the opposing force that is militating against you. Faith is the victory. Glory to God. So we also said, what is faith? So faith is the assurance or the confidence of what we do not see. What we do not see, we are convinced of it, we are sure of it, we are persuaded of it. Glory to God. We don't see it, but we are convinced of it. That is faith. It is a substance. It is a spiritual force. A spiritual force that gives us that just gives us that assurance that we know that despite the fact that sickness are on my body, but according to God's word, I am healed. Glory to God. Notice. According to God's word, I am healed. According to God's word, I am rich. So he's convinced of it, though he's not saying it yet, but he's convinced of it. So the conviction is faith. The assurance is faith. The confident expectation is faith. Glory to God. We did we so much about that. So we also said, how does faith come? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So which means, if we want to get the conviction for what we hope for, for what we desire, for what we aspire to be, what is going to give us that conviction that we have it, it is the word of God. Because the word of God is a spiritual food to us, to our spirit man, constantly 
infusing into us that inner confidence, that inner assurance. The word of God is. So we also said, what does it, where is faith? Or what does it mean to believe with the hearts? We said that with our born again recreated human spirit, that is where faith is. Your spirit man is the real you. That is the part that you have to use to believe God. Not your mind. Not your mind. Not your body. No. Now, you can have doubt in your mind and faith in your heart. And you follow that faith that is in your heart, in your spirit. You know, when the word of God talks about the hearts, it's not talking about the physical pump. No. It's talking about the very core. The very core of the matter. Which means the very you. So, man is a spirit. He has a soul and is living in a body. So, the part of you that should believe God is your spirit man. And that's very important because even sometimes people might be having a lot of thoughts going through their mind and in their hearts they are wondering why is this going through my mind? Or why am I, why am I, why am I thinking of, why am I thinking this? They've forgotten that the mind is an arena of reasoning but your spirit man is that part that God is looking at. That's not you thinking about that. The enemy is trying to sidetrack you, he's putting so many thoughts into your mind and the devil will be will be condemning you that you are the one thinking that thought. No, you are not. <laughs> glory, glory to God. If you are, if within you, you know that you are not. Thoughts are just bombarding your mind. Thoughts of depression, hopelessness, whatever it is, are just bombarding your mind. You are thinking that why am I thinking this way? You need to do what you need to cast down those thoughts according to God's word. The word of God says, casting down imaginations and every I casting down imaginations and thoughts and every I thing that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. So you, if, if, within you, you know that you are not the one thinking that. But the enemy is just trying to put you condemn to, to put condemnation into you, thinking that you are the one thinking that. Now, a lot of us will be will be, oh man, why am I, you know, we, we, we will take that and will enter into condemnation or depression or hopelessness. Then the devil already got, got us. But God doesn't want us to know, God, God wants us to be knowledgeable about that. That your mind is where the spiritual battle is, that the enemy will always want to take you off from the realm of faith. But once you know that that is not you, that's not you thinking about that. So you don't you don't cast those thoughts with silence. You speak the word of God. You use the name of Jesus and say, in the name of Jesus, that thought leave my mind. Glory to God. So, but understanding that that's not you thinking about that is a great thing. And the same way, doubt can be in your mind and faith, you are confident in your heart that the sickness, God has healed you. It's just a matter of time. Manifestation will come. You are confident that God is going to help you in your, in your situation. You are confident of that. You are confident. You are so assured of that. So, knowing that is very important. So, when those thoughts are just bombarding your mind, you know that that's not, you. that's not you. You just laugh at the devil. Glory to God. You just laugh at the devil because that's not you. You, you already know that everything that is, not of, that is not good, that is of evil report, that is depressing, that is of no joy, it is not from God. It is not from God. So, those are the way, those are like, like a, 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 the way for you to judge what is from God and what is not from God. God is not going to condemn you. No, it's not. God is going to, even when you have sinned, God is going to be, the Holy Spirit is going to be nudging you to repent, to come back. He's not going to be saying, saying that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, look at you, you have messed up. Look at you, look at your life and you call yourself a believer. Look at your life. See how your life is. No, that's not God. It is the devil. God is love. Even while we are, even while we, even when we have messed up, God is always calling us onto repentance because he loves us. He doesn't want the enemy to take undue advantage of us. Glory to God. Very, very important. All right. So, faith is of the heart. is of the born again recreated human spirit. That's where faith is. Faith is not of the head. It's not of the body. That is why the word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight. So, when you are walking by your reasoning or you want your mind to agree with the word before you step out in faith, <laughs> I'm telling you, once the devil understands that, he will keep putting doubt in your mind that uh, that word cannot be true, that it says you are healed. No, look at your body. You still have sickness in your body? No, it can be that you are healed. Look at your, your bank account. You see so many things that are still going on in your bank account. You still have in debt and all that. Look at it. You are not rich. He wants you to agree to take that thoughts and pull you into the realm of doubts, of unbelief and faith. I mean, doubt, unbelief, those are enemies of faith. We're still going to talk about enemies of faith. Those are enemies of faith. But once you understand that, no, God says it. I believe it. And that settles it. Bam. That's it. I don't care what is going on on the outside. The word of God already told me that I am rich. Glory to God. The word of God already told me that I am the healed. Because according to God's word, 
The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. He that comes to God must believe that he is, and is the reward of those that diligently seek him. So very, very important for us to understand that. Glory to God. All right. So faith is of the heart. Then we say that this faith that is of the heart, we have to release it. Faith is of the hearts in, in a complete way. It is actually faith is of the heart and of the mouth. You believe something in your heart, in your spirit, man. That which you believe, you got to speak it out. You have to say it out. Very, very important. You have to say it out because that's what you believe. That's what you believe. You have to say it out. So don't be quiet. You have to say it out because that's what you believe. And in, why is it that we have to release our faith? In releasing your faith, one of the things that it does is, 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 is enforcing the reality of God's word into your mind. That's number one. Number two, it is also releasing the power, the creative power of God, just like God spoke in the beginning. Light be or let light be and light was. So you are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are actually displaying the same attitude of God when God sees it saw darkness, he spoke light. So in speaking, you are bringing the manifestation of it to come to pass. Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Um, uh, Mark 11, 23. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Say unto this mountain, say unto this mountain, be thou removed. And shall not doubt in his heart. So you, you say what you believe in your heart. You don't doubt it with your heart. But you believe in what you have said. He said, He shall, shall not doubt in his heart that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall come to pass, believing that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he has said. You see, you don't just believe it in your heart. The revelation of God's word that has been done upon your spirit, man, you don't just believe it. You have to say it. You have to release it. That is why there is no Christ. That is why. I mean, we, uh, that is why there is no Christianity without confession, without saying. We are talk believers. We are talk folks. We speak the word. We speak God's word. Whatever is going on around us, we speak what God has said. We are not holding all the back. We speak the word. Because the, uh, the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, it says, we have been the same spirit. Notice, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit of what? The same spirit of faith or attitude of faith. God saw darkness. He speaks his desire. So in speaking it, you are bringing or you are bring, let me put it, let me use a scientific way. You are putting into motion the mechanism or the way to bring to pass the, that which you desire. So the word in your heart is not just enough. Praise God. We need to meditate. We need to study the God's word so that we get God's word into our spirit. Man. But that's not enough. That revelation of God that has been revealed or that in inner assurance or persuasion of, 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 of God's word that we, are, that we are having in our spirit man, concerning our situation or our circumstance, we need to release it. We need to say it. Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say. Remember, the disciples came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus, increase our faith. <laughs> Jesus told them, hey, guys, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it shall obey you. Be cast into the sea, and it shall obey you. Notice, it shall obey you. It shall obey you. So, he's saying that even that what you call, that is in your heart, or what you already have in your heart, begin to use it. How do you use it? Or how do you put it into operation by saying? You see, a lot of people, when they hear us that we are believers, that we believe in confessing God, we say all this confessing, possessing bunch. <laughs> I just laugh. Because number one, if you didn't say it, you wouldn't be born again. You, could, you couldn't have been born again if you hadn't said it. If I hadn't said it, Romans says, he said, for with the heart man believes. And confession is made unto salvation. Notice, unto salvation. For with the heart man believes. And confession is made unto salvation. So which means, you don't just say you believe. You have to say what you believe. To get saved. To get born again. Now, the word salvation here is from the Greek word sozo. Which has an idea of deliverance, healing, preservation, soundness, prosperity. Every good things that the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ brought for us. So think about that. The way you can have the reality of those in your life is... You understand it, you get into God's word, see what God has said, you believe it with your heart, and 
you say it. <laughs> Glory to God. You say it. You see, there was a time that the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Brother Egan. He told him, he said, I will love you. I will really want you to do three times more of teachings than the believing part. He said, a lot of, a lot of us believers, that we are not missing it in the believing. Because if you ask anyone that you believe that God's word is true, yes, yes, God's word is true. But have you ever boldly declare what God has said concerning your situation in a particular situation? Boldly declare, declare it. Do you say God's word daily? Do you confess that you are the victorious one? That God lives in me? That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? That God, my God, supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? That, that though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, so that through... Through his poverty, I might become rich. That I was, I was young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is he begging for bread. God is my supplier. That a lot of us we don't say that. We don't say that. And in not saying that, we are not creating the reality of it in our lives. So he said, I would really want you to do three times of teaching concerning saying, speaking God's word, or confessing God's word. And here's the thing: the word of God says Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession or of our profession. Profession or confession, what we are saying, because he is the high priest, is our is is our greatest high priest. He took his blood into the heavenly of heavenly holy of holies. He obtained eternal redemption for us, so that now, what everything that we are saying in the new covenant, in the new testament, it is based on the finished work of redemption, on his blood, the 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 the, the greatest assurance for our sin. Glory to God. So when you say Himself took my infirmities. And bore my sicknesses on the cross. By his stripes I am healed. God, Jesus, is, is, is the guarantor for that. His blood has guaranteed us for that. Glory to God. His blood made that available for us. So you can boldly declare it. Because that's what God has done for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. You see that? So there is no Christianity without confession. And there is no realization of the word of God without us saying it, even after you have prayed, after you have prayed. In fact, what, what you say after you have prayed can either nullify your prayer or can, en can either enhance you in obtaining what you have prayed for. Because sometimes we prayed, then after I say, whoa, this thing is, is just getting tougher and tougher. I'm not seeing changes. You see, the devil can increase the intensity of the situation. And you say, well, I prayed, but it, ah, I just, I believe God for my healing. And it just seems that the symptoms is just raging towards me. Oh, I don't think I am here. You see, the devil just tricked us into the realm of reasoning. But faith believes what God has said and says and said. He said, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written. He believes, he speaks. So we also will believe, we speak. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what is happening. We say, Lord, I thank you because your word is true. I thank you because you are true to your word. I thank you because what you have said you will do, you will do. Because you are not a man that should lie. You are not, you are not, you are not man that should repent. What you will say, you will do. What you will do, you will say, I thank you. I don't care what is going on on the outside, but I believe that you are working for me. And here's the thing. God's word is a seed. The word of God is working. I'm telling you. The devil doesn't want us to understand that. The word of God is a seed. The Bible says the kingdom of God is a seed. A man plants a seed. He goes by his sleeps night and day. Things, events, is going on about his own events. But he comes back and the find out that the seed is shooting. You see, you don't have to convince yourself that, oh, is God's word going to work? It will work. Glory to God. Once you have planted it and you are nurturing it. You are not allowing unbelief or whatever or whatever circumstance to be pushing you away from the world. You just can't keep nurturing it. Keep nurturing it by your thanksgiving. The Bible says, Abraham, being fully persuaded that what God has said, is able to do. He kept glory, glory to God. That's part of nurturing. Thanksgiving. You say, Lord, I thank you for my healing. I thank you because your word is true. I'm like, Lord, if, if I ask my body right now, body, are you healed? My body will tell me that I am not healed. But according to your word, I am healed. Glory to God. Whose report will I believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. The report says I am healed. So I am healed. I am healed. Thank you, Father. Because you will not lie. You have said it. I believe it. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. My pocket is saying that I'm broke right now. But according to your word, your word says my God shall supply all of my needs. According to the riches of your glory by Christ Jesus, my bank and cash might be in red. But I thank you because they are filling up. Because your word says the Lord will open his treasury. 
His treasury, his good places, and will pour unto me great things. Glory to God. The words, God, those words says, ye shall have surplus of prosperity. He said, wealth and riches are in my house. Glory to God. You are declaring that. You are declaring that. Here's the thing. You declare that you are calling heaven on your behalf. You are calling heaven on your behalf. I'm telling you. You are calling heaven on your behalf. Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. The primary way through which we bind things here on earth, it is words. <laughs> you know, you know I'm, I'm originally from Africa. You know, when you, when, we, when you come to some certain areas in Africa, you know, all those people that they do voodoo, how do they invoke or how do they do all of those things? Through words, incantations, they understand. They begin to rattle. They begin to rattle because their words is 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 controlling their dark spiritual world. You see, it is a counterfeit that the enemy has stolen. God has given us His words to bring into operation His kingdom. So they understood that they keep they keep rattling. They keep rattling. They keep rattling. They will say, okay, blah 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 blah. That I mean, they will just sound to so many things, and they will then usually command you need to be doing this and. <laughs> they, they, they invoke all of those dark spiritual world and things are beginning to happen. But how much more we that the original thing belongs to? There is no possession of our covenant rights and privileges without us believing and saying and also add working in love to it. Without us believing and saying. So when sickness is raging your body, that's not the time to be crying, oh, why me, why me, why me, why me? Get into God's word. Get into healing scriptures. Begin to feed on those healing scriptures. On those healing scriptures. Begin to say, God is my healer. He is your healer. Now, I, I'm just telling you why is it that we have to say it. One of, one of the reasons is, is renew our mind. Number two is also a process to bring it into manifestation. Faith is of the heart and of the mouth. That's the way God has designed it. <laughs> I didn't design it that way. Because he's a God of faith. He oppressed that way. God never does anything without saying it, without speaking it. That's why he speaks through men. Glory to God. He never does anything without speaking it. He operates by words. By words. Glory to God. Kings rules and dominate by words. Kings. Have you ever seen a king that he doesn't issue a command? He issues a command because he knows that his word carries power. The word of God said death and life are in the power of the tongue. Are in the power of the tongue. So what you say, what you are continually saying, is what you're going to become. Either you like it or not. So if you want to see changes in your life, you got to check what you have been saying. If you want to see the word of God to be a reality in your life, you have to be speaking after God. <laughs> Glory to God. You have to be saying what God is saying. You have to be speaking what God is speaking. Glory to God. Very, very important. Very, very important. All right. So the, la the, the last place that we stop is that we should not cast away our confidence. Do not cast away your confidence, which means this is your persuasion, your confident expectation, your assurance. Don't throw it away. Why? Because the enemy is going to test it. What he wants you to do is to throw it away. Don't be like those guys that they rejoice at the word briefly. And for a short while, because of persecutions, they just throw away the word. See, that's what the devil wants us to do. So don't throw away your confidence. The word of God says, do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. So we need to hold on to God's word like a bulldog. <laughs> I'm telling you, because there are, there, are, there are enemies of faith. The devil will bring persecutions to us. Now, somebody will say, ah, this is going to be tough. Do I have to be? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. God doesn't want you to do it in your own power and your strength. He wants you to rely upon the Holy Spirit that is on, the, on your inside. You see, Christianity is a life to be lived from inside outward. Inside outward. When you are continually looking into your own strength, your strength will fail you 100% of time. <laughs> Glory to God. Your strength will fail you 100% of time. But if you look into the greater one that lives in you, because the, Jesus said, he said, I will give you a comforter. 
The word comforter in Greek is parakletos, which has the idea of standby, strengthener. <laughs> Glory to God. Strengthener. That's why Paul was praying for the people in Ephesus. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will, will strengthen you on your inner man by his spirit that dwells in you. Will strengthen you in your inner man. The Bible says the spirit of a man, a strong spirit will sustain a man in his infirmities. So, Christianity is not supposed to be outside to inside. It is inside outward because the kingdom of God is within us. All of those force of forces or the fruit of the born again created human spirit, they have to help us in our life. <laughs> you see that? You know, when I think about our journey in the Lord, that if we can just use our will to cooperate with God, every at on at every battle we will always win. Notice. Use our will to cooperate with God, which means we decide to stay with God, to stay on God's side. And staying on God's side is you also part of staying on God's side is you recognize that the Holy Spirit lives in you, it's your strengthener, it's your helper. Even when it seems that your flesh is so weak, that your strength is so small, you say, Lord, I thank you because greater is he that is in me. Now, saying that you are activating the strength of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Or then you go into God's word, you begin to read God's word out loud. There is strength in God's word. You begin to meditate. You are getting comfort from God's word. You see, God doesn't want us to do things in our own power. When the word of God says, be strong in the Lord. Notice, he said, if Ephesians, I think Ephesians 6, 18 or so. He said, or 6, 6 18 or 6, 12. He said, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. He's not saying you should be strong in yourself. To be strong in the Lord is to be strong in the reality of the word of God, the power of God's word. Understanding the power that is in God's word and understanding the great mighty Holy Spirit that lives in us. See, having those understanding, the Bible says, a man of knowledge increaseth in strength. A man of knowledge, Proverbs, a man of knowledge increaseth in strength. Which means, when you understand what, who you are in Christ, what God is doing for you, what the mighty word of God can do, the name of Jesus, the person of the Holy Spirit living in you, who the Father God is to you, who the Lord Jesus Christ is to you, when you understand. And that comes, it takes time. You continually feed on that, feed on that, feed on that, feed on that. Because in feeding on that, there is a strength that you're drawing from the Word of God. There is a strength that you're drawing from the Father God. There is a strength that you're drawing from the great mighty Holy Spirit that lives in you. So you continually feed on that, feed on that, feed on that, feed on that. I'm telling you, even so when, when the tribulations are coming, because your spirit that is strong is robust. Oh, just know God is my legs. Glory to God is my salvation. God is for me. I don't care what is going on. He is my light and my salvation. Though enemy should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. I, the Bible says, they that trust in the Lord shall be like a Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Glory to God. My trust is in the Lord. Notice, it didn't just come that way. It comes from, first of all, you are reading God's word. You are meditating on God's word. You are studying God's word. You are listening to messages. You are praying in the Holy Ghost daily. You are strengthening your spirit, man. Either you like it or not. Every one of us, we are in a battle. But we are not fighting from a victim mentality. We are fighting from a victorious mentality, from a dominion mentality. Because that's what Jesus Christ already purchased for us. Glory to God. His blood purchased that for us. So we are living in that mentality. We are, we, are, we, are, we are operating in that mentality. We're not saying, oh, I don't care. Oh, I don't know what is going on. Maybe maybe they're going to take my house. Maybe things terrible is going to happen to me. Maybe I don't even know what is going to be with my child. You see, those are the thoughts that the enemy are putting into that mind. He wants you to take it. The, the devil understands the power of words. He understands that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So he understands that by the time you are Picking those thoughts, and you are you are picking those thoughts. I mean, when, when you pick the thoughts, it's like you are is is you are agreeing with those thoughts. I just say, oh, I don't think, I don't even think I can ever make it in life. Oh, I'm 45, I'm 47. I don't think I can ever have a child again. Who says? <laughs> Who says? It is the devil, but that's not God. But God is saying he's not saying that. God says with with me, all things are possible. Abraham at 100 and Sarah at at about uh, 90, they gave birth. So. 190, think about that. You know, a man of God said, said something, Brother Keith. He said, just imagine, which is part of what we're going to get into. He said, just imagine, Abraham is 100 years old, and Sarah that is 90, they are going for prenatal care. You see the elderly man going, and you see the elderly woman going. They say, oh, people will be looking at them. What? What are they doing? At 100? Look at this man at 100. Look at this woman. Some people might even be saying that, man, this man, you are, you're going to kill this woman. Don't you know that his body is so fragile, he cannot even hold this thing again. How did it even happen? What? Looking at them. But they, despite all of those, 
<laughs> they endure all of those and they obtain the promise. They obtain the promise. All right. So let's just start with this. We'll just use uh, three or four minutes with this, which is the power of patience. Glory to God. You see, a man of faith is a man of patience and is a man of love. Let me repeat that. A man of faith is a man of patience and is also a man of love. There is no one that will say, I'm a man of faith without a man of patience. You see, patience or endurance is an undergird force that will undergird our faiths until we see the desired manifestation. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of us, we don't, want to, we don't want to do that. We don't want to wait for that. Let's look at this scripture. We just go to the scripture. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this scripture. Thank you, Lord. Please go ahead and share it. Look at what the word of God says here in James chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. If this message has been a blessing to you, please share it, share it, share it. Glory to God. James chapter 1. From verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Look at what it says. James chapter 1 from verse 2. He said, my brethren. Hmm. God speaking to us. My brethren, can't eat all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. <laughs> Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience, patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect, entire wanting nothing. I'm telling you, think about this. He said, my brethren, can't it all joy? Can't it all joy? My brethren, can't it all joy? Hmm. Can't it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations? <laughs> can't it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations? So, when it seems that nothing is, is going the way we want it to be, <clears throat> there are oppositions to our trust, our believing God. Let's say for our healing or for our finance. And it just seems that things are not working. God says, can't eat all joy. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Can't eat all joy. <clears throat> can't eat all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith Walketh patience. Now, by definition, let's look at definition of patience so that it's going to help us for us to understand this. By definition, thank you, Jesus. Look at this word. The, the Greek word translated patience here, I'm not a Greek scholar, so I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. It's hypo, hypo, I am hypomone. <laughs> let, let, just bear with me. But let's find out what it says. Now, it says, is a cheerful or hopeful endurance. Glory to God. Patience. Cheerful or hopeful endurance. Confidently expecting. Cheerfully expecting. Glory to God. Confidently expecting. Cheerful or hopeful endurance. Constancy. You see that? I'm pulling up the Greek meaning. Enduring. Patience. Patient continuous waiting. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I love this. Is that cheerful or awful endurance? Cheerful or awful, awful? Cheerful or hopeful endurance? That's why the word of God says, count it all joy. <laughs> Glory to God. Look at it. I'm telling you, this is powerful. Look at what it says again for that definition. It's that steadfastness in holding on to God's word. You see, a man of faith is a man of patience. Is a man that is cheerfully enduring until he sees that which God has said in his word. He believes it, so he's, he's constant in his believing. He's holding on to his believer despite what is going on on the outside. He says, God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. Despite the fact that things are not happening the way he desire now, but is cheerful. There is a cheerful, a confident expectation that God has said it. I believe it. I'm not going to change 
what I believe. Patience. <laughs> Look at it. Is that steadfastness? Constancy, endurance. Now, we need to understand that patience is not passive, it's not passive, or it's not just going through it and say, Ah, oh, I don't even know what is gonna happen. I don't even know what's gonna let me just endure this this thing, this thing, I don't even know what's gonna happen. No, that's not that's not patience. That's not patience. It's hopeful. Hopefully enduring, cheerfully enduring, waiting for it, waiting for it, cheerfully enduring and waiting for it. He's, he's saying what God has said, despite all odds. Abraham, look at what, look at the life of Abraham. We're still going to come back to this. We're still going to come back to this. I'm telling you, because things don't. In our, in our believing God, they don't always happen immediately. Unfortunately, some of us, is, that is so hard for us to swallow. Because why? We were living in the world of fast, 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 fast. <laughs> we're used to it. We, we, you know, here in America or in several countries that you might be, there are what we call drive through Even there is a drive through cleaning. You know, you want to uh, cl dry cleaners, drive through you just come in, you put in the cloth in there, then you probably come back later, maybe a couple of hours, you drive through again, you get it. Or drive through pharmacy. You know, you submit your prescription. While you are waiting, they fill it for you. They, if it's something that is right, right, they can get it for you right now, they get it for you. Or they can just say, come back, or you can just come back. So there is a drive through, which means you don't have to get off, get off your car, just drive through. You know, drive through McDonald's, drive through restaurants, you know, just drive through. They just so we want things fast, 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 fast. And unfortunately, that has crippled in into, into us as believers. But everything is it is not instant, it is not always instant in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, it's so hard for us to swallow. That is why some people will say, Pray for me. Now, when you prayed for them. They don't see the manifestation now. Then they go to another place, another man of God, man of God, pray for me, pray for me. Because, because they are not seeing it instant. They are believing, I mean, they are concluding that they are not healed. And that's not true. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's not true. So they are concluding that they are not healed. They are concluding that they haven't received their breakthrough because they, they don't see it now. Now, let me repeat it again. A man of faith is a man of patience, which means he believes God and is enduring, he constantly enduring all of the odds. He constantly enduring all of the odds or he constantly hold on to the word of God despite whatever is happening. That's patience. A man of faith is a man of patience. And patience, thank God, is one of the fruits of our born again created human spirit. You see, God is so awesome. He knows that we need a spiritual force. It's a spiritual force. But you and I, we have to put it to use. We have to. That's why the word of God says, he said, count it all joy. My brethren, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Worketh patience. I mean, the trial does not produce patience, but in trial we put our patience to work for us. Glory to God. In in temptations, in trial, or in adverse circumstance that is posing a threat against the word of God, we are putting our patience to work for us. Why? Because we need to hold on to our faith. We need to hold on to our belief before we can see the manifestation of it. If we don't hold on to our faith, to our belief, we can never, never see the manifestation because the enemy knows that, he knows that, if we, when the enemy knows that we are quitter, we quit easily, then it will put precious persecutions. Go and read, I mean, we're going to get into, into that. The sword, the parable of the sword, the Bible says, for persecution's sake, <clears throat> they what they endure for a bit, then they just gave up. Persecutions, precious persecutions, they just gave up. You see, 
the word of God in our life will be tried. <laughs> I'm telling you, will be tried. A lot of us we don't want to we don't want to get this. We don't want to listen to this. We just want okay, pray for me, man of God, in Jesus' name, be healed. Okay, I'm checking. Oh, all right. Okay, but I'm not healed. Oh, because the symptoms is still there. Who says you are not healed? God says you are healed. You are healed. You see, you believe that that. I've been prayed for me. I've been prayed for. Jesus said, you shall lay your hands upon this. We shall lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So that's what Jesus said. You just believe that. I thank God because they prayed for me. I believe I'm healed. Even when the symptoms is still in your body, you believe. Remember, you are not denying that the symptoms is no longer in your body, but you believe that you are healed. <laughs> Glory to God. You believe you are healed. It doesn't matter what is going on because God says it. I believe it. And that settles it. So you're continually giving glory to God. Then you are engaging the spiritual force of patience that is a, that's part of the fruit of your born again recreated human spirit that is on the inside. So you are being resilient in holding down to the world against all doubts, thoughts, forces of doubts, forces of the enemy, against whatever it is. You are going through it cheerfully. Why? Because you know that God is faithful to his word. What he has said, he will do. Glory to God. Even <clears throat> if it means for me to die in believing, I know that God is the, the maker or is the one that has said this. And he can never, 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 never lie. No, this is a new series on this school of faith that will continue. Because I notice, you know, my desire is, Lord, help me to help believers. 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 Because a lot of us, when we are prayed for, two months, three months, we're not seeing results. We just say, well, that man of God is not anointed. <laughs> you know, then we're looking for who is who has got the heavy anointing? Who's got the heavy anointing now? If you're a believer, initially they just got born again, you instant something might be happening, but it's going to come to a time that God wants you, will expect you to develop your faith in his word. <laughs> so God wants you to develop your faith in his word. At that time, you will not be able to be carried along by faith of others. Now, a lot of us, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. And here's the thing. Faith realm is a rest. Rest in the sense that you have, you have known that God is true to his word, so you are holding on to the word, despite. So you are engaging the, the spiritual force of patience to undergird your faith, to help you to hold on until you see the manifestations. Things, don't, things are all, not always instant. If you have been prayed for, for healing, believe that you are saved. That's what Jesus said. Mark 11, 24. He said, what things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Believe that you receive and ye shall have them. Put the force of patience to work. Patiently wait for it. Now, as I said, be patient is not just suffering, suffering through it. <laughs> In the sense that you are not you are not in, you are, your faith is not active at that time. And one of the ways to make your faith, or one of the ways that shows that your faith is active while you are waiting is your joyful confession. It's maintaining your joy in holding on to the word of God. Maintaining your joy in trusting God. You are believing God for more money. You are found out from God's word what he has said. You are maintaining your joy that is your provider. Despite the collector calling, despite whatever they are calling, you are saying that God is my provider. He will come through for me. Lord, I thank you. That's what Abraham did. He said he kept giving glory to God, being fully persuaded. So he engaged force of patience. Let's look into that. We're going to come back to here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, he engaged the spiritual force of patience. Look at Hebrews. I'm telling you, my prayer is, Lord, help me to help believers. Because there are a lot of us that we need to understand this. When we understand this, it's going to help us to receive our miracle. It's going to help us to receive our breakthrough. 
So we are not like winds, just like James says. We, 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 we toss here and there. You know, we are not stable in our way. Today we feel it. We say, okay, God is with me. Tomorrow we don't feel that God is with us. We say, oh man, where is God? God is always there. We walk by faith and not by sight. Look at what the word of God says eh? in, in uh, Hebrews 6, 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope. <laughs> I love that. We, it sounds like James 1. I mean, James 1, 2. Show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, which means be consistent, be consistently constant in holding on to God's word until you see the end of it. You're, you're trusting God for healing. You are holding on to God's word. You are thanking him every day. You are looking into the word. You are looking to God's word. This is what God has said. You are reading the word out loud to yourself. You are confessing your healing scriptures. You are holding on to God's word. You are holding on to God's word. You are joyful about it because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God's throne is at the back of his word. You know, my wife says something in one of their brokers. She said, she said, the word of God is powered by God himself. <laughs> I love that. It's Powered by God himself. So you know that God's word is powered by God himself. The throne of God is at the back of his word. So you are consistently, you are showing the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Very important. Look at it. He now went on in verse 2. He said that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through, followers of them who through faith and Patience. Did you see that? <laughs> Be followers. In verse 11, he said, And we desire, we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Let's look at Amplified. Let's look at Amplified. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Amplified. Classic. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. She'll sink right now. Lord is okay. All right, good. We, we got it. Same. Look at what it says. He said, For God, oh, from verse 11, thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. He said, But we do strongly and earnestly desire each of you to show the same diligence and sincerity. Diligence. You are diligent in holding on to God's word. Sounds like patience. Sounds like endurance. And sincerity. Hmm. All the way through. <laughs> I love that. In realizing. And enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope. Which means bringing your confident expectation into fruition, into realization, into reality. Until the end, he really desired them not to give up. He really desired them not to give up. He really desired them not to give up. So look at verse, verse 12. And verse 12, he said, that ye be not slothful. Slothful, sleep. Not being diligent. You have to be diligent in your faith walk. Be slothful, but follow us. Follow us. Follow us of them who through faith. Follow us. Follow us of them. Of them who through faith. Who through faith and patience. And patience. That's another word. That's the word for patience again. Or endurance. Or forbearance. Patience. Long suffering, but joyful long suffering. Joyful long suffering, patience, endurance, constantly, steadfastness, perseverance, forbearance, long suffering, sureness in uh, long suffering, forbearance, glory to God. Look at what it says. Inherit the promises. Inherit the promises. A man of faith is a man of patience. Things in the kingdom of God are not always instant. <laughs> glory to God. But the most important thing is, is us holding on to what we believed. Glory to God. And God will confirm the word in our lives. Look at what it says. Look at what it says in verse 13. Abraham. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by, by no one, by no one, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply. That's the blessing. That's the promises. I will multiply thee. And so, <laughs> I love this. He had patiently, it doesn't mean that he was just folding his arm, he's not engaging his, he's not declaring his faith. No, that, was, that wasn't what Abraham did. That wasn't what Abraham did. 
Look at what he said. He said, and so he had patiently endured. He obtained the promise. He obtained the promise. I believe we are getting some of the answers to our questions. How come I'm not seeing my miracles? How come I'm not seeing the manifestation? The answer could be that you didn't hold on to what God has said. Persecutions come, trials come for the word sake, because of the word. You just throw it out. You just gave up. You just gave up. That's why you didn't see the results. Because he said, who through faith and patience. He said, after Abraham, I'm so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Cheerfully, joyful expectation of the promise. Because a man of faith is also a man of joy. <laughs> Glory to God. He's not a man of sorrow. He's not moved by the winds. He's steadfast. He's steadfastly, is steadfastly in is steadfast in believing God, in trusting God for what God has said in, in his word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm telling you. It's so it's so it's so touching. When some people say, Well, this Christianity, I can't do it no more. You know, like I believe God for something, it didn't happen. I was expect I believe God for healing for our husband, it didn't happen. So I have to choose alternative. They forgot that the word that they believed, that the devil tried the word in their lives. Or the word was tried in their lives. They, they, they had persecutions, but they could not endure the word. They could not endure the word. They had persecution and they could not endure the word. For the word's sake, because of the word, they could not... Because of the word, they, 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 they had persecutions because of the word. And they just said, you know what? I don't think I can do this no more. And they gave up. They gave up. They gave up. We're going we're gonna to look at a whole lot of, a whole lot of, a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of scriptures regarding this. Why? Because it is one of the areas that the devil is attacking our, is attacking our believers. When you say, I believe that Jesus is my healer. It could be that at that point in time that you the symptoms will be so raging the more. <laughs> you just want to say, oh, I don't think I can do this no more. When you say, I believe that my finance, that God is providing for me, it could be that time that, <laughs> that, uh, that uh, the, the collector will be calling constantly, 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 constantly. But praise God. The Bible says, can't it all joy? Can't it all joy? When you fall into diverse tests and trials, can't it all joy? Can't it all joy? We, let's look at this scripture. Let's look at this scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All right, Luke, I think Luke chapter 8. Let's look at it. The parable of the sword. We're still going to look at all this again. We're going to close on this right now. Luke chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 8. Thank you, Father. Malabush, de Degrelos. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right, look at what it says. Let's look at uh, New King James. Please share the video. We're going to close right now because I believe that there is someone that God wants to help. Look at what it says in Luke chapter 8 from verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, then he spoke to them. He said, A sower went out to sow his seed and he sowed. And some fell by the wayside. Let's, let me pull it up. Just notice I'm not pulling it up. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 8. All right, from verse uh, 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him for every city, he spoke by parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, and some fell by the wayside, and it trampled down. And the boss of the year, so many things happened. All right, so let's look at the explanation of the, of the parable of the sower. Now, look at what it says in verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Notice. Who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of the heart. Now, if you read the other accounts, you find out that the reason why the devil came and take the word from their, from their heart is because they lack understanding of it. That is why the revelation of it is very important. When you have revelation of God's word, you hold on to it. The devil cannot take it away from you. So we got to put all of the accounts together. 
He said, and takes away. He said, lest they should believe and be saved. Notice. He said, but the one, the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, when they hear, receive the word with joy. <laughs> receive the word. Notice. Receive the word with joy. And these have no roots. Who believe for a while. Who believe for a while. And in time of temptation, fall away. Wow. Who believe for a while, but in time of temptation, fall away. Who believe for a while, but in time of temptation, fall away. You see that? And the devil knows this. They believed for a while. One of the definitions of patience is long. Long. Enduring long. Enduring long. So they believed for a while. So which means they did not incorporate the force of patience to their belief. And they fell away. They believed for a while. But let's read it again. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read it again. Thank you, Lord. Look at it. He said, who believe for a while and in time of temptation or trials, fall away. Fall away. Fall away. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, you got to understand that every one of us believers, we have to fight the good fight of faith. We have to fight on, until the end. Unto the end of our confident hope in God. Of, unto the end of our reality, unto the end of our uh, uh, assurance or persuasion. Which means the manifestation of it. We are to fight until the manifestation of what we we'll believe. That God says it. I believe it and that settles this. Glory to God. We're going to continue from there. Glory to God. Oh, wow. We've spent almost an hour. Glory to God. But I just feel that there are some that they need answer now. They just want so they can get blessed. Please watch this video over and over again because patience is very important. You see, God wants us to be skilled in the things concerning his kingdom. When we are skilled concerning his kingdom, <laughs> nothing is going to move us. When we trust in God, if it's one year, two years, three years, we know that God said it. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. God made promise to Abraham. It didn't happen until, until years. Joseph saw that it was, it was going to be uh, a person of high importance in which all his family will bow down for. At the age of 17, he didn't become prime minister on the, uh, until the age of 30 years. Think about that. 13 years went past. He went through a whole lot. And the word of God says in Psalm, said, the word of the Lord tried Joseph. I'm telling you, go and study it. When we understand that it doesn't matter what is going on, that God cannot lie. And Joseph kept his faith in God under God's faith with patience. He had every opportunity to throw, to throw out everything. At the age of 17, the promise was made. He didn't become, he became prime minister at the age of 30. 30, 13 years. He went through so many things. But in it, God was with him. I'm telling you. In it, because I can't even, in prison, the Bible says God made him to prosper. So that when God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through some of those things. Because there might be a bigger thing that is coming. is getting us ready for it. But a lot of us don't want to hear it. <laughs> we don't want to hear it. I'm telling you. No sickness. No sickness. You know, a kind of difficult situation that is almost like puts your faith to test. Because bigger thing might be coming. So when the bigger thing comes, just ha 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 ha. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So the Lord might just allow some things. But not sickness, not sickness. Or whatever, or even when the enemy is putting the pressure on us, the Lord can just hold on a little bit <laughs> for us to, to put our patience to work, <laughs> to be convinced that God is alive, glory to God, that God is real, that it doesn't matter what is going on. So we just keep declaring God's word, keep giving glory to God. Abraham kept glory, giving glory to God. The promise was made to Abraham, I think, at age, age uh, is it 90 or so? You know, years later, you know, of course, he went through a whole turbulent time, but it came to a point. <laughs> he just knew that, you know what? I have to wait patiently for God. He tried to help himself. I mean, the, the wife tried to help and got us in, into trouble that we are today. But thank God, he came to a point. He became fully persuaded that what God has said, it is, it is the truth, fully persuaded. 
he kept giving glory to God. So he engaged the, the spiritual force of patience. Remember, patience is not uh, patience is not being, being, being passive, that you are just suffering for something. No, it means you are consistently constant holding on to God's word cheerfully. You are giving glory to God. You are being joyful in it. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You are counting it all joy that God is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. We give a praise because your word is true. We thank you, God, because you will expand this word in our hearts in the more. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Glory to God. Please, share the video. Have a watch party about it. Somebody's life might depend on this. Somebody might at the point of giving up. But hearing this message that, oh, it is the enemy that is putting pressure on me, that God is not a man that can lie. Excuse me, let me hold on. Let me keep giving glory to God. Because I know that God cannot lie. Glory to God. That might be is our breakthrough. Be a social media evangelist. Don't just hear the word and just keep it to yourself. Share it. Share it. If you have been getting blessed through this ministry, either through the watch party, the watch party, you can always share. I'm telling you, you can share. Because there are, in, there are two judgments. The judgment seat of the judgment seat of Christ where believers will be judged. This is not, we have been separated from unbelievers right now. We're not talking about hell. But it's time for us to be rewarded. Some of us is going to be shocked that God is going to ask us that under your phone, when you hear that particular message, did you share it on your wall? Or did you even, even write a scripture on your wall to encourage someone? My word that has power, that has life. To encourage someone. Did you even pull out something there for me to work on in the life of believers, others, even unbelievers? I'm going to say, Lord, where? On my phone? Yeah, you have smartphone. The Lord will even quote your smartphone for you <laughs> because it's all knowing God. He, will, he can even tell you how many smartphones you've used. That in all of this, in your social media, you never even share the gospel. You see, thank God for this social media that we have. It is a way through which the gospel can be well propagated. Thank God for the people that have, that have designed it. They are making money from it. But the primary, I believe the primary goal is for the gospel to spread. Remember the word of God says, it says, so, so shall this word be preached in, in every way. Then end shall come. You think you're going to be traveling from nation to nation? <laughs> thank God for the power of technology. I'm broadcasting right now. There are people that are watching from different countries that I've never been to. See that? So, be a social media evangelist. Hell is not a place that you should even wish your, your enemy to go to. So, sharing this word can help someone. Can bring someone to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Please, share the video. Have a watch party about it. It is important. Glory to God. Because we are going to get our reward. I'm doing my own. I'm, I'm honestly contending for the realization of my own rewards. Glory to God, because I don't want to, I don't want the Lord Jesus to tell me that what I asked you to do, you didn't do it. But I want I want it to be come, thou faithful and obedient servants. Come and have what I have for you. For being diligent in doing what I have asked you to do. That's what I want in the in the judgment seat of Christ. That should be your own goal, too. Please share the video. Let it be a blessing to someone. Daily, share something scripture, something scripture on your social media, on your social media, Instagram. In Facebook, there are over 3 billion people on Facebook. Instagram, over a billion people. And all of those social media, they are not just there for us to be having enjoyment with our friends. Thank God for that. But we need to use it as a platform to spread the gospel. Glory to God. Thank God for all of these different ideas. Thank God for Facebook Live. Thank God for YouTube Live. For all of those Periscope. So many things. Life, life, life. Why? Because the gospel has to be preached everywhere. Then the end shall come. Glory to God. Jesus is coming. Either you like it or not, he's coming. Either you believe it or not, he's coming. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much. Now, tomorrow is our faith for healing. We're going to come up 7, 7 15 -ish tomorrow. Glory to God. 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please announce. Anybody that is sick, our God is the healer. You know, by training, I'm a medical doctor. I have special specialization in obstetrics and gynecology. I believe in healing. Glory to God. In divine healing. Because medical sciences have limitations. Glory to God. So I understand the medical parts. And I also understand the word of God is much more superior to medical science. To medical sciences. Glory to God. I'm not crazy. 
I understand what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying because God is all knowing, all powerful. Medical sciences have limitations. My name that you're saying right there is not just title. It's not just title. I am actually a medical doctor, glory, a trained medical doctor with also a specialization in obstetrics and gynecology. So I know what I'm talking about. Tomorrow is divine healing school, glory to God, because I know that putting your trust in God will always give you what you want, will always help you when the result might come from the lab says, well, you got this, there's no hope, but you know that there's hope for you in, in the Lord. Because God is the healer. He is the healer. I know what I'm talking about. He's the healer. Glory to God. That's one of the reasons that I teach about healing. Because I want people to be helped. In my active days of medical practice, I've given people, well, there's nothing I can do, but not with God. <laughs> Glory to God. So that's why I love teaching about it, about him. That he is the greatest physician, the greatest scientist in the world. Glory to God. That's my God. And that's your God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right. Until tomorrow, remember that Jesus. Oh, please like our page on Facebook, Akintade Oyemi Ministries or Akintade Oyemi. On YouTube, all of these videos that are right there. If you just search Akintade Oyemi Ministries, all of our videos, faithful devotion, prosperity time, glory to God, I worship, so many different areas that the Lord has given us in this ministry. We are broadcasting ministry. We also go around into different countries to be a blessing to people, to be a blessing to people, glory to God, to be a blessing to people. I'm going to announce this, to be a blessing to people. Now, in going around different countries, we do not charge. It is free. Thank God for great partners that the Lord has given us, glory to God. And we have been doing this right now for almost four years. Nobody has ever paid for our flights. No. For our flight. When we get there, thank God, they give us hotel. Even if hotel is not given, we pay for our own hotel. It be a blessing. Honorarium not given. We don't, we don't care. We, we're just doing what God has told us to do. Told us to do. So if you want to be a partner, the link is under this video. If you go to our ministry page, the link is right there. You can give. And no pressure in giving. No pressure. Because God loves a cheerful giver. But thank you so much for everyone that has been given. We're able to do this. We're able to come online practically every day. Glory to God. Thanks God. Thank God for all of this software they were using in broadcasting. Praise the Lord. So we'll thank God. We'll thank God for you. So please consider being a partner. On the on, when you click on the link, the givingfuel.com. I can tell you we ministries. You can always say, okay, whatever you want to be uh, given every month, you can do that, you can set it up. Remember, you are helping to make it happen. Glory to God. So on 15th of this month, on the uh, July, July the 12th, I'm going to be with my wonderful brother, Dr. Olutai Olabigen, glory to God, of uh, the Throne of Grace Tabernacle, Ocala, Florida. It's going to be a night of restoration. Everything that the devil has stolen in our lives, we are claiming it back. <laughs> The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent ones take it by force. So we are claiming it back. We are taking it back. So remember, this uh, July 12th is going to be, and the time is 9 p.m. The address is right there. It is we are in Ocala, Gainesville area, Orlando area. Let's come together. Glory to God. Ocala, Gainesville, they're not too far. To, Ocala, Gainesville, Orlando, they're not too far. Even Tampa, you can always go. You can always get there, congregate there. And let's look unto God as our healer, as our deliverer, and as our restorer to restore us. To restore back to us everything that the enemy has stolen in our lives and no more stealing in our lives by the enemy in the name of Jesus. All right, on Sunday, I'm going to be with um, Pastor Chris, Apostle Chris Bakari at, at Power Assembly Orlando in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to pull up the address so that if you're in Orlando area, you can join us. All of this is going to be broadcast, it's going to be streamed live by the special grace of God in end of August. End of August, I'm going to be with my wonderful brother, Pastor. Pastor Adeyefa, Benga Adeyefa, glory to God. In the redeemed Christian church of God, in Bogno Regis, in England. Bogno Regis, in England. Bogno Regis. Maybe I'm not saying that name right. Bogno Regis, in England. So it's going to be an awesome time in England. Then going to Nigeria for some meeting with Youth for Christ, with God Chambers Ministry, and some other ministries in Nigeria. Getting back to U.S. again. Glory to God. This is what God has called us to do by the special grace of God. Glory to God. In September, I'm going to be in Texas with Pastor Felix Bamery. Glory to God. And also in October, we're going to have our 2019 camp meeting in Orlando, Florida. We already put the, the, the announcement on our Facebook page. It's going to be a wonderful time. 
Camp meeting 2019. Glory to God. The theme is the word and the spirit. Glory to God. It's going to be an awesome time. So all of these, they are on our Facebook page. Please save the date. If you want to travel, we're going to put hotel information there to Orlando. It's going to be a time of refreshing, refreshing in the presence of God, in the presence of the Lord. It's going to be a wonderful time. Praise the Lord. In November again, I'm going to be in Highland. Glory to God in Kaba. So please pray for us. In December, I'm going to be in Zambia. Glory to God. I'm telling you, this is what God has called us to do. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we love doing it because lives have been transformed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we we'll thank you for today. We give a praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, until tomorrow, for faith for healing or healing school. Remember that Jesus is Lord and is coming very, very soon. Shalom. Be blessed. Amen.